Warning, the following material may not be suitable for small children, some adults, a few senior citizens, many farm animals, and most household appliances. Can you tell this is no money? Talk to us. Flashlight, hold tight. This is not called stand-up flashlight. Gee, humbug, why am I here? Sponsor my eyes. Oh, ow. Hi. And welcome to yet another fun-filled night in Pasadena, California. Kay Ballard, <laughs> mothers-in-law. <laughs> oh, jeez. Dad, that's the last time you ever come to my comedy show. Anyway, they're going to be bleeping this out, don't worry. <laughs> People at home are going to be watching the show, they're going to say, show us your fat, fat me. You know, it's going to be great. Uh, we have a very funny show for you tonight. We certainly do. A good friend of mine coming up first. Tours all over the country with the Four Tops and the Four Seasons and the Temptations. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeff Martyr. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. I feel like a, uh, I feel like a weatherman at a planetarium. <laughs> I just... There'll be a cold front moving through the Orion constellation, causing some precipitation in the Pleiades. Of course, weather in Miami will be fine for the full contact shuffleboard tournament. <laughs> I have a Ivy League attitude, and actually, I was in college for an hour. I was not what is called, quote unquote, college material. I was like, what? You have to walk from class to class? <laughs> Too much commitment. My peer group did it. Four years, six years, eight years, some of them. They lived on campus in those little dorms, two feet by three feet. That's why kids take mind expanding drugs. It's not for the high. It's to make their room appear larger. <laughs> wow, I'm freaking out. It's a condo. While I was there, I did learn, however, that you have uh, two hemispheres in your brain. And I do comedy for both hemispheres of your brain. Now, a lot of people don't know that you have two hemispheres of your brain. And that's okay, because a lot of people don't care. I'll tell them this, and they'll go, hey, hey, we only use 10% of our brains anyway. Why not lease the rest of the space out for advertising? And we do. Um, we really do. One, I saw in the back of a magazine, there was an ad that said, earn up to $750 a week stuffing envelopes. You're going to have to stuff them with heroin and sell them on street corners, because that's a lot of cashish for a simple skill. And even those lamos have a left and right hemisphere in their heads. This is how it works. One hemisphere of your brain controls linear logical thought. That'll now be represented by this microphone, shown actual size, except on television. Now... The other hemisphere of your brain is a garage sale. Thoughts, statements, fragments, character vignettes, concepts, one-liners, it's different. The other hemisphere of your brain controls creativity, fantasy, and imagination. And if you had my head, <laughs> you'd have to babysit thoughts like this all the time. Some of us, some of us are telepathic. Why is Wednesday called hump day when most people get laid on the weekends? <laughs> Why do they call it rush hour and your car just sits there? <laughs> Why is easy listening music so hard to listen to?
Now, here's the rule. When I walk over there, it should be on, and, uh, and you'll laugh appropriately. It's different. It's whack. You'll catch on, unless it's very late when this thing is airing. Do you think when Gandhi got shot... <laughs> It's all about impact. Television is all about impact and the power of the spoken word. Do you think when Gandhi got shot... I think I've proved my point. Do you think when Gandhi got shot, he went, holy cow. You know what it's all about? I'm not sure what it's all about, but I think it has something to do with doing the hokey pokey and turning yourself around because even in the song it says you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. It's even in the song. Sometimes the answers are so obvious, we miss them. Perhaps you don't. I used to get high with Plato, not the clay, the philosopher. I remember it like it was Tuesday. We were standing outside of the Parthenon after one of his lectures, smoking some things, and I said to him, we like to smoke pronouns back then, and I said, play, because we were on a monosyllabic basis. What's your philosophy of life? And he looked at me, he said, Je before I tell you, you have to understand that philosophy is the science of estimating values. The superiority of one substance or state over another is determined by philosophy. I looked at him and I said, <clears throat> no more for you. <laughs> Look at your eyes. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. You want to have all your faculties about you when you're sitting there with a man of that intellect discussing serious things like... If Fred Flintstone knew that the large order of ribs was going to tip over his car, why did he get them at the end of every show? If you have a funeral at night, do all the cars have to turn their lights off? Create more business. Do people in France use American ticklers? Ooh. When cows laugh, does milk come out of their noses? <laughs> Thanks for playing along. Good night. For eight weeks only, VH1 takes a break from the hits to present two shows for one hour of comedy. Where is Alan Funt? They'll never get me on Candid Camera. Smile! Candid Camera's on VH1 every night with Sunday, right after Stand Up Spotlight with Rosie O'Donnell. Am I on TV yet or what? Here's some fun. VH1 Stand Up Spotlight and the classic Candid Camera for eight weeks only, Monday through Thursday at 10, Friday and Saturday at 11, only on VH1. War is a part of man's basic nature. You cannot change the basic nature of man. He brained it. Poverty and crime are inevitable in a high level. You have to learn to accept pain. Don't get involved. You're we can control, control emotions by introducing chemicals. Tired of the old answers? You can know about life and how to improve it. Read Scientology, The Fundamentals of Thought by L. Ron Hubbard. Buy your copy at Walden Books. I'm Cy Sperling, president of Hair Club for Men. These men called Hair Club's toll-free number requesting our informative booklet about thinning hair. Probably the best call they've ever made. Inside is everything you need to know about hair replacement, including this complete objective bibliography. You'll learn about toupees, weaves, transplants, the misconceptions of minoxidil, as well as Hair Club's non-surgical strand-by-strand method, which adds carefully matched top-quality human hair to your own hair. In no time, you'll have a natural-looking head of hair that lets you lead a worry-free, active lifestyle. 
No chemicals, no surgery, yet it feels like a part of you. The price is based on your degree of hair loss. And remember, we stand behind it. If you want more facts free and without obligation, you can call this toll-free number for your free booklet. Consultations are free. And by the way, I'm not only the Hickler president, but I'm also a client. From Jackson to Jackson. VH1, the greatest hits of music video. Do I look all right? We do, special request. Oh, folks, 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 folks. I'm dieting again, can you tell? Trying to lose enough, mon lose enough weight to get naked in a magazine for money. Because I found out how much money those women make. They make a lot of money. Latoya Jackson got naked in Playboy magazine for a million dollars. A million. People thought she was a trampy, slutty whore. A million dollars. <laughs> if I had a body like Latoya Jackson, I'd be butt naked every day in the frozen food section of Ralph's. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'd be going, I need more fish sticks. <laughs> I'm gonna have to think about it for a million dollars, five dollars, I'd be, woo! Woo! You have to look good, don't you? Especially here in California, everybody looks good. I went shopping in Beverly Hills in a sweatshirt and jeans. I was arrested. I said, officer, what's going on? He goes, hey, fashion felony. I have to take this Merle Norman course every three weeks now, you know. We're doing our seasons next month. I think of... Things have been improving, though. Things have been improving. I have it in Glamour magazine two times. Anyone see me in Glamour? In the don't column? Don't wear that sweater with those pants. That's me. I covered up my eyes. You guys probably would have recognized me. Like that's ever going to disguise you. Like if you're ever in the don't column, friends and family are going to be leafing through. You know, that looks like Rosie, but with her eyes covered up, I just can't tell. Not going to happen. Kids are so cute. You know, I have a little baby niece. I have a little baby niece who's 18 months old. And she smacked her mouth on the laundry basket last week while I was babysitting. And I pick her up, and she's crying, right, hysterical. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. Pull up blood everywhere. To which I start hysterical crying. To which she goes, no kai kai wo wo, no kai wo. So now I'm even worse. I'm like, <laughs> I run, you know, into the Korean market where this really nice man and his wife trying to understand me, but I'm like speaking something foreign from English and so are they. They're like, what you need? What you need? I'm like, I'm a paper. What's a paper? What's a, what you need? They're like giving me Q-tips, you know, maxi pads. They're trying to help. So I gave the baby ice cream, you know, it finally actually helped the thing, gave the baby ice cream and my sister came home and told her, I'm going to have sugar. I hate that. I'm never going to be a parent. Uh, you guys are uh, really hot. You're a really hot crowd. And we have a really hot comic coming up. You might have seen him in Spike Lee's film, Do the Right Thing. Has a new film coming out in March called House Party. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Lawrence. Thank you. What's up? I just did that to mess with the cameraman. How y'all doing? All right, I love white people. I figure that's the best thing to say in a room full of white people. All right, man. All right, dude, all right, all right. All right, you love us, man, all right, all right. No, I kid, though, I kid racism. I think racism is so crazy, and I don't know who's ever instilled in that mind, but I went to see Mississippi Burning in an all-white movie theater. I think it was this neighborhood, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I went to see Mrs. Bernie, an all-white movie theater, and some white people feel so bad after this movie. I had 30 white people come up to me crying. We're sorry. Can we give you a ride home? We'll take you to Africa. We don't mind. We have enough gas. 
<laughs> it was crazy, man. I don't know. It, I don't. I guess I'm 24, and I guess it bugs me. I, I wasn't back in that time, but I'm named after Martin Luther King, so I take on the racial issues. If you know, if racism, I jump out there. But I, I watched a program. Tom Brokaw said something about we were the better athletes because of bigger thighs and stuff. <laughs> I, and they said, this is what he said. He said, well, white people are better in the longer distance because you have the endurance, you guys can go. And black people are better in the shorter distance. We're much quicker and we get out the block faster. And I said, wow, that's good to know because next time I steal a white woman's purse, I just run around the corner. <laughs> huh? Ain't no need of me running to Europe. You're going to catch me, right? Oh, just take your time. I'll catch them. Oh, I can't go long. I mean, those thoughts. Are gonna wear down. I mean, oh, that's kind of crazy, man. So I don't know, but um, I kid white guys. I like to mess with white guys because uh, uh, y'all love when y'all beat us at something though in the sport. Y'all love when y'all beat a black man. Y'all go off. I mean, I'm like y'all got Larry Bird and Jobs, right? I mean, y'all love that though. I played a white guy in this game and he beat me and went off. He's like one of those crazy. I, he won and he just started. All right, man. Started banging his head on the wall. Bang, man. Bang, dude. All right. And I was like, all right, my man, good game of pinochle, all right? <laughs> oh. I kid you, though. So, we got any guys here that are not afraid to cry in relationships? Because I'm just out of a relationship and I cry all the time, man. Can't be afraid to cry. Women love if a man cries in a relationship. That shows the woman that you're really in love with, with her, or you got some good love in one, right? Don't think he's crying because you make a hell of a ham sandwich, all right? <laughs> I can't say, all right, all right, all right, I'm crying. Because the way you put that mayonnaise on that ham sandwich. <laughs> now he's crying because he's in love with you, man. I, what trips me out the guys that, that uh, act like they're not, you know, they can't show their hurt, you know, to try to hold it in. And they make the self look stupid, right? Because a woman could come up to you, look, you don't respect me, you don't respect the relationship, I'm leaving. And guys are like, fine, you want to leave, leave, I'm a man, you know, I'm going to be all right. You know, I'm not going to cry, you know. <laughs> I love you, woman. I should crack your forehead. I might not have been the best man in the world, but I tried. I brought you a lot of stuff. I ain't gonna lie, I brought you a lot of stuff. I brought you a hat, a scarf, a t-shirt. I want all my stuff back. You know, you know it's also wild though, like in relationship with someone threatens to commit suicide, you know? When they threaten to commit suicide on you. And that's crazy, man, because I had a woman try to scare me like that. We are living together, and uh, one morning we got in a real bad argument. I said, hell with you, and I stormed out the house. I got home like late that afternoon. She was sitting in the middle of the floor with a razor blade in her hand. I said, what the hell are you doing? She said, you lucky you caught me. I was just about to kill myself. I said, woman, you had all damn day to kill yourself. I got to go, y'all. God bless. This Saturday, it's John Cougar Mellencamp. 24 hours of music from America's heartland. From a small town to the American dream. It's a VH1 Superstar Saturday on October 6th. One day, round the clock of music that's red, white, and blue. All day and all night of John Cougar Mellencamp. Only on VH1. Tone up your body with exercise. Tone up your skin with tone. I'm toning up. I'm toning up from my head to my toes. I'm toning up. I'm toning up. Now my skin's gonna glow. I'm toning up. I'm toning up. Toning up looking good. I'm toning up. Tone, the skincare bar with cocoa butter. It cleans, moisturizes, and conditions for healthy looking skin. I'm toning up. I'm toning up. Now my skin's gonna glow. Tone up with tone. Now in cream color.
don't know what to look for in a car? This. A seatbelt can keep you from being thrown out of the car, and that's the main cause of death in car accidents. It can keep you from crashing into the windshield. It can keep you alive. I know. Seatbelts saved my wife and me when we were in an accident, so buckle up. Because one of the best things about driving a car is being able to walk away from it. This message is from the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. Ha presents world premiere programs, new TV comedies featuring new performers on the talent pool. Breathe into your buttocks. International stand-up on London Underground. $140 million for the Reagan Library. Gosh, seems like a lot of money is spent on a shelf. And sophisticated sketch comedy on random acts of variety. Now where the car goes? New TV comedies you'll never see on those serious networks. Fridays and Sundays starting at 9. Only on Ha, the new TV comedy network. <laughs> From Phil Collins to Phil Collins. VH1, the greatest hits of music video. Why am I here? What a week. What a week it's been. Uh, I was back in Boston last week. I got arrested two nights ago. I'm driving home from a, a job. Cop pulls me over, says, You drinking? I said, I don't know, you buying? <laughs> he did not have the same sense of humor as you people. This week has been so bad. I got some bad news, family news. They just put my uncle on a heart lung machine. Then they hired this stupid nurse. She rigs it up to the clapper. <laughs> she just sits in the other room. Breathe in. Breathe out. You're dead. You know. Very embarrassing. I guess the big news, I got married two months ago. Uh, newly wed. Uh, No big deal. Anybody can do it. It's no... Uh... But it's expensive. I wasn't ready for that. Engagement rings alone. You can spend 80, 90 bucks. <laughs> for the single guys. I know we got a lot of single guys here. I'm going to save you guys a lot of money. Now, I don't have time to go into this. It takes too long. Just remember these two words, and it's going to save you money years from now. Just remember these words. Cubic zirconia. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you watch Home Shopping Network. You figure out the rest. See, I'm not cheap either, because there's sometimes I hate cheap people. I lost my library card, so I go to the library, and I'm real nice to this librarian. I say, excuse me, ma'am, can you help me out? I've lost my library card. She actually shakes her finger in my face and goes, you know, there's a 25-cent replacement fee for that. I said, fine, here's five bucks. Set up the whole library. What do I care? It's 25 cents. What is that, some kind of stringent penalty? <laughs> Well, I'll never lose that again. <laughs> I guess it's part of growing up. You know what I decided happens to all guys when they turn 30? We all go through this. Lower back problems. It's like a status thing. When you're 19, 20, you're into women. 25, you're out drinking all night. 30, how you doing, Bob? Lower back problems. <laughs> We do stupid things. I won't go to a chiropractor. I don't believe them. First of all, they're not doctors. They have no student loans whatsoever. <laughs> Went to a chiropractor. He charges me 50 bucks for a consultation. 50 bucks? He doesn't even do anything. He does, like, paperwork. And on the way out, he says, remember this, Rich. Bend at your knees. <laughs> well, thanks. Take another 50 for yourself. You know, for so many years now, I've been bending at the thighs. <laughs> and it just occurred to me, you're absolutely right, there is no joint there. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody seems to rip me off. I got ripped off this morning. I went to, I don't know if I can say the name of the store. Well, it's an electronic store. It rhymes with a radio snack. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> I go and I ask for a couple of batteries. The guy goes, 95 cents. I go, great, here's a buck. He goes, wait a minute. I need you to fill this out. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I said, what do you mean? He goes, we need your name, your address, and your phone number with every uh, purchase. I said, no, pal. Follow me on this one. <laughs> I give you a buck. 
you give me two batteries. That's pretty much the end of our relationship. Is this guy going to call me up in two years? Yeah, Bob Johnson down at Radio Snack. How are those batteries working out for you? Everybody, car mechanics are the worst. They smell me coming. They see me, it's like, summer home. I know nothing about cars. I went in, I had a flat tire. I said to the guy, can you help me out, pal? I got a flat tire. He goes, you know anything about cars? I said, no. He goes, that's not a flat tire. That's radial depressurization. We could lose the whole game. That engine. That's $900. Bend at the knees. Here's something, here's something I was thinking about the other day. This is something that has always confused me since the beginning of time. It's the way women take off their shirts. Every woman in the room, you're from different places, you're different ages, but you do it exactly the same way. Why does every woman in this room and in watching in the audience exactly the same way you do this move right here to start? Every one of you. <laughs> what the hell is that? That's like geometry. A is to B, B is to A. You do this little wiggle thing. And then this is the part I don't get. Somehow your arms are still crossed. And I, it doesn't work out on paper. I've tried it out. You actually get it up over your head. It's folded and put away. How the hell do you do that? No guy does that. Guys go right for the collar. Get See you later. Bye -bye. X is for, uh, I don't know. Find out what the alphabet really stands for when you watch VH1's Encyclopedia of Music Videos. <laughs> Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Each hour is a different letter and a totally different topic. Classic videos and the latest hits from the VH1 archives. To me, he is definitely for Encyclopedia. Only on VH1. It was after midnight. I was sitting in a bar next to this old couple. Beautiful song on the television. All of a sudden, I was home in the middle of nowhere.